I'm your host, six-time near-death experiencer, evidential medium, and Christ Chandler, Tamara Calder Richardson, and your host of the Seeking Heaven Near-Death Experience and Other Phenomena. For the month of February, we have a special series called Love Leader Lessons, and today I have a special uh, program that I put together, a special episode, and it's called Puppy Love. And I have today here Tucker, and he is the love of my life, and he's a rescue. And I've had him four years. He's getting very antsy. And he's got a blue eye and a brown eye. And he, he looks weird to y'all, but I swear he doesn't look weird all the time. But he's a little antsy like most dogs. He wants to do his own thing. But he has just been such a such a joy in my life. And, oh, God, I just love this dog. And so do other people love their dogs. So I wanted to go through and... We have special love leaders that you've seen this month that talk about maybe their pets visiting uh, after they had passed, or there's you know maybe also the special relationship we have them. How unique? Because we're unique. We're different. We offer people different things that maybe they need to complete in themselves and vice versa. And so do animals with us. So I wanted to first start with my own personal story of puppy love, and this is a dog Larry that I had when I was right out of college a couple years. I had just gotten married. I was 24 and he was a toy poodle. He was about four or five pounds, but he was very handsome. He was absolutely could have been in shows. He was perfect looking, very muscular and he knew it. And I had this dog, Larry, uh, for almost 20 years. And he was funny, his personality, he would make me laugh. And he always gave me comfort. Now, during the time my husband was on the road on Capitol Records, he was a, a drummer on um, a band called Fetch and Bones. Uh, and it was during the 80s, and he was gone. And so we were in an apartment. So he said, don't get a poodle, whatever you do. <laughs> or I don't like small dogs. Well, that's what I did because we were in an apartment, and we just didn't have a lot of room. So we, so I had Larry, and we became very close. He slept with me in the bed. We did everything together. He was my buddy, and he was very funny. And later on, when we got our house, he used to jump from sofa to chair to sofa to chair. He was very funny, and he just had this great personality. Well, his little body just couldn't keep up with him, and toward as he aged toward the end, he just really got old. I mean, he lived a long time, so he looked like Yoda. He didn't have hardly any hair, any hair on his ears. He had cataracts you couldn't see, so I would pick him up, and I would take him outside and put him outside in the grass and let him go to the bathroom, pick him back up, take him back in the kitchen, and we had baby gates on two doors of the kitchen, So, and then we had a bed, and so that, you know, if he made a mistake, you know, if he peed in the kitchen, it's just the kitchen, we could wipe it up. So we had, we would always kid my husband, I would, that we ran a senior citizen center for for dogs in the kitchen. Uh, and that made him feel safe because he was in a little area. So one day, he um, he just wasn't acting right. And I took him to the bathroom, and he just fell completely over. Um, not like passed out. He just fell over. And I was like, oh, boy, he's feeble. So I brought him in. We put him in a little blanket, and I laid him on my chest. And I did not expect to uh, – yeah, I'm a medium, yeah. But uh, I didn't expect – um, that he was going to tell me something, but he did. And he told me, I can't do this anymore. I can't. It's all been for you. It was telepathy. You know, he's telling me from my mind to mine. And it was the most tender, soulful moment. Oh, my God. And I said, it's okay. I told him, it's okay. It's okay. I love you. I know you always love me. I know that. And then he tried to bargain with me, said, well, can I be a really big, I want to be a really big black dog next time. And I'm like, that's good, but I probably will get another small dog, but that's okay. You go ahead and do that. If you want to do that, if you want to be a black dog. So he literally, as he laid in my arms on my chest, I was laying on the sofa and it was the most intimate, beautiful thing. And it was peaceful. He just slept in my arm. I said, I love you. I've always loved you. And he just, and we had a shared near-death experience. And, but with the, um, you know, his love that I have for him and vice versa, that can be take that cannot be taken away. However, after that, very shortly for like five years, I would hear him walk around pitter, 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 pitter with his feet. 
and he would um, he would come in spirit and visit me. And matter of fact, he I would say it's a few months ago, not quite a year. He did it recently, and he actually showed up. Um, he showed up, um, and he would go, you know, circle in the bed. And then I was like, this is great. I could literally feel the bed being depressed. And and so he, that's that's what he did for a long time. And I think the reason that he does that is because he wants to give me comfort if I'm sad or if I'm depressed or, you know, not that I have a lot of those moments, but, you know, you know, we're human that he was, you know, he's still there for me. But yeah, I, and and it's crazy. Like I'm like, wow. And the bed will depress and he'll just circle around and I can feel, I've even felt him curl up beside my leg and I've even, you know, heard the sounds coming down the hall. So, and it's funny, different mediums he's come through. I mean, a lot, this guy, this little guy. Okay. So if you can see, he's got the Colonel Sanders cut. So Ruth Schilling, who's going to be here again, she did the Egyptian uh, talk, but it was, um, she's going to be back again in uh, March because she's written three books on, on mediums on uh, books. She's actually interviewed mediums. She has three different books and about mediumship excellence. Uh, we're going to be talking about that. And it was funny. I was taking a class. I think it was one of my, I think it was Tony Stockwell from the UK. I've taken classes with him for about five years and, and she was in one of the classes is how I met her. And I don't know why the students did this after eight hours of reading people all day long, very vigorously for like a week. Why we went back to, you know, the, the hotel room and someone's room and six of us started reading people. We thought, well, let's do animals. So Larry came through and he came through about the Colonel Sanders cut. We used to like to really give him the Colonel Sanders, like on the chicken bucket. And then she said, you gave him beer. And I went, yes, I used to give him beer in a shot class. He loved it. He thought he was a big boy. So our animals are connected with us. So I want to show you a couple other things with, as far as my animals. And you, you might get a kick out of this. You might not. But I have been with um, animals in my life for a very long time. The first animal that I had was at a centennial. And there I am. Yeah, look at that. Um, I was... Um, uh, I had a, a pet uh, when I was a centennial, and it was in uh, first grade. And this is TC as my name, Tamara Calder, and then I got married, Richardson. And so I added that on. And this is TC. It was a beagle, adorable, and what a precious shot, right? Look at those pants, right? That's the 70s. And so um, anyhow, that was one of my first dogs. I entered a centennial and won. It was a big to-do in Hickory, North Carolina. And one of my favorite books was The Pokey Little Puppy. I still like that book, guys. I love that book. And funny, the dog that um, that I thought was the pokey little puppy that I always want, I thought it was Abby. I met Abby. I actually got her out of a small mill town 45 minutes away in Kannapolis. And uh, this is me taking her home. This is me. <laughs> she's a fuzzball. Um, and she's a shizu. I'd always had poodles for like years and years and years. And so I got Abby. And uh, Abby's, you know, quite beautiful. She's actually gotten prettier the older she's gotten. But she's very difficult dog. She's very stubborn. Uh, you can't tell her what to do. She's incredibly smart. She knows all the toys in her toy box. So go get your monkey. Go get your banana. Go get your Willie Barkwood. It's a little stick. It's, you know, a little, it's a stick, but it's not a stick. It's like, looks like a cartoon toy stick. And she knows everything. And she also likes Christmas. She will literally, will wrap the gifts. We will put them under the tree. She will have them and wait till Christmas. She'll sniff. I'll say, that's right, that's yours. And when she opens it, we have films. Look at her little gingerbread collar. We have films of her doing this. So animals are so unique. And what I finally had to accept, she has a whole wardrobe. I mean, guys, when I say that, I'm not kidding. She's got the whole thing and she keeps it on. She wore a cocktail dress for three weeks. She just loves it. She's just like her mama. And so um, she is an alpha though. She will not let someone come in and she knows she's the best watchdog I've ever had. But she had such an issue. I took her eight months to puppy school and um, she bit the teacher on the eighth month and the last day. Yeah. <laughs> Class didn't do so good. So I was talking to Jesus saying, Jesus, oh heavens, what am I going to do? So when we go on vacation, we went on vacation. We thought, we'll just, we'll just put her in the best place. We put her in pet paradise. 
oh, it was nice. We put her there. She had the entire staff, this fancy organization, so in a tether, they put her in her own room, like an adult size room, like a room with a TV and a bed because she, it's just a game. She really wasn't going to hurt them and uh, had them in there. Yeah. So I said, Jesus, what am I going to do? So I said, I need a boy dog shizu, but somebody like totally chilling. Well, I saw this guy, Tucky, and he's got a blue eye and a brown eye. It's kind of like he's got little crazy eyes, but it makes him so much cuter like that. And I saw him in the, it was the next, uh, if you don't have the next door app, it's pretty cool. You get kind of find out what's going on in your neighborhood. If you don't have it, you should get it. And I saw this dog and the, the people said, well, we can't keep him. So I go to look at this dog. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's cute, right? He's a little, I will always get fat dogs from now on because they're so much better to cuddle with. So I went, it was a bad, it was a bad uh, stormy day. My husband was running some errands. He says, you better not go look at that dog. So I did. I, I didn't listen like most wives don't do. <laughs> most American wives, right? And so I didn't. And um, I went and looked at him. But what was weird is that the lady there and the husband, uh, I hit it off with the lady. I gave her a medium reading on the spot. It was a very deep and soulful. I do healing medium readings, very deep, like years of stuff gone. And um, she had her husband come through. And it was just like, it was like this Treasure Island story. It was crazy. All this stuff came through and coconuts and gold coins. It was nuts. And we immediately bonded. She goes, my God, just take the dog. So I literally got the dog for a reading. Uh, I mean, she owed money on him, uh, you know, from the vet. And I was like, no, you know, she's like, no, please, you are the one. He jumped up in my lap, kissed my face. She's like, he's never done that with anyone. So we planned this out. A week later, I was going to come get him, take him straight to the vet, have him checked out bring him, before bringing him back to Abby. But my husband, uh, they brought him over. It was summer. And my husband looked at his teeth, checked him out. He wasn't sure. Eventually, my husband, he's a goner. Look, he's just totally into this dog. And so um, Tucky became my buddy. He had been in 12 different homes. He was a rescue. He really didn't understand love. He didn't understand attention. He was very easygoing, but just kind of aloof. He was just, you know, glad to be there and glad to eat. And so with time, he literally helped me design my website. That's me in costume as a Southern Bell medium. And there he actually spray painted a hat. I'm not right. And put a little bow. And he has a tuxedo on with little cuff links and everything that he's on, uh, that he's wearing. And he did. He's For an hour and a half, he actually posed, go to my website, Southern Bell Medium, and you'll see it. So my my husband and I love to dress up for Halloween. I don't, want, I don't really care about Halloween. I just like the fun part of being, you know, crazy acting and just you know, being a different character and, and so forth. And I think that's the artsy side of me. I did go to art school. And so I have to have my dogs doing this. So I got him in the mess. I got Tucker and Abby in this whole thing. And then even when it came to the Chinese New Year, since he was a Chinese dog, I got him in that. And then my mom's helping out. We've got him all dressed. I and mean, he's got a well, it's really Japanese, but let's just say it's a Chinese wig. And so, uh, you know, this is something that we did. <laughs> and then also when it came, yeah, he was just sheriff one year because we really got into the walking dead. So we, you know, thought he would be like, you know, Carl. And then St. Patty's, you know, we would, I mean, this little guy is so easy going. He just let me do anything. And then this little dog that everyone might have thought would have been not attractive, but because he was so unusual, um, you know, over time, you know, I have really, you know, fallen for me. I even took him to my husband's work party at Lucky Dog. I put him in a baby carriage. Um, it was a, a, another story, but the baby carriage was a disaster. <laughs> it was torn because he's so heavy when I came back and then some other dog grabbed his toys out of it. It was, it, but anyhow, I would take him places. And then one day, uh, I guess it was last August. Um, and there he is. This is so sad. Um, he, I heard this horrendous noise coming out and he fell over and um, it was really a horrible noise. I got to tell you, it was pain. It was not good. And he fell over and he went into a seizure and he died and he turned. He, my dog had a near death experience. He died. He was dead about five minutes. He was totally, he, he peed, he evacuated everything and his tongue was blue and he was dead. And I said over, and I plead the blood of Jesus and for the life of Christ to be upon him. And my husband, oh, I mean, I, I love my husband, but I wouldn't say he's as spiritual as me, 
But man, we were into it. We were into some Jesus. We literally, please, God, please just, you know, and he revived. He came back. I mean, we were so like, please, out of the love. And we were so shocked. Come to find out he had a heart problem. And he is on limited time. He's on a lot of medication right now. I don't want to cry. I've had to cancel a couple of interviews with like Dr. Jeff O'Driscoll and people because of his situation. And we're, you know, I would have never like, oh, natural. No, you don't. You don't want to see an animal suffer. It's not good. You know, that's why we have to be on heart medication. You try to do things naturally. I took him to healers. I mean, you know, I did the shade over him. I did the Jesus thing over him. I did the light ball inside. I still do things. But we knew his time was limited. So my husband and I took him to Hilton Head for his Make-A-Wish. And he had never seen the ocean. And he was, that's me, Tamara and Tucky. And in the sand, that special, I put clay sort of in the top a little bit. That's my husband. I'm like, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm just kidding. But I love that dog. And he was amazed. And I asked Spirit to give a sign. And I looked down at my feet. I didn't even look. And there was a sign, a white feather. But what I don't have in these photographs, guys, I got to tell you this. This is crazy. About six photographs. And, and there's quite a few because I'm going to show you quite a few photos. I mean, just I'm going to snap through it real quick. These photographs. Oh, he loved peeing and pooping in the sand and Hilton Head. He just loved that. I don't know. It's a dog thing. But um, when I took the pictures, I even had a birthday party for him, the whole bill. You know, so Casey, no one ever celebrated his birthday. These beautiful, soulful pictures. Every picture's like these. There were six or more. There was a green ball that kept falling everywhere. And I know because I've seen the angels. I've seen the different colors. I've been in the presence of angels in this, in this world and in heaven. And he had Raphael with him, this beautiful green. And it was a perfect orb. And I saw it around his bed, but I did. I have photographs of that. And I know y'all, if you want to see it, I'll, I'll make sure that that's available. But, you know, I think what this soul did to me, I'm like, out of all the dogs I've had, why him? I think it's because he never was loved. He even had spent time with a college kid who fed him pizza all the time, which is why if we ever order Pizza Hut, he really likes that. Um, and I think that he taught me patience because we have to feed him medicine. We have to give him medicine five times a day. We have to grind it up and put it in special food. And it's just like a little baby. And it's, we've just been a caregiver and he appreciates it. And we tell him we love him. I do healing on him. And I think that um, it's, he's taught me to be a better person because aren't animals really about having patience uh, showing us as teachers, you know, patience and love and enduring love. And they just, you know, this little guy, he really didn't want anything from me just to, you know, be fed now and then. But to see him change from that and to actually uh, choose me and I choose him. And my husband's just absolutely crazy over this dog. I mean, you would not believe he holds him like a newborn baby. I mean, I think if he could nurse him, he would. I mean, he's, <laughs> I mean, he's crazy about this dog. And he's different. So I think animals come in our life to teach us different things. And as you go forward and listen to our speakers that we have, our love leaders with their little stories, I just want you to enjoy it. And I want you to enjoy all the precious uh, God's animals around you and the plants and the trees and whatever pets that you may have, because you know what, one day we're going to see them again. And I have a sign above my sofa and it says, heaven is a place that one day we get to see all the animals that we've ever known. And I can't wait. So enjoy the stories. They're very magical. And enjoy your puppy love episode. Much love from me to you. It's a real honor to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. And um, it's a real, I mean, this is a topic that means a lot to me because I had, I had a dog, uh, I've had several dogs and cats, uh, but one dog in particular, uh, her name was Scooter. She was a Border Collie. And um, I had uh, always had a job, but I, I had cattle for about 18 years. And um, a friend of mine gave her to me because she was a Border Collie and had some herding instincts. 
so uh, I could use all the help I could get. So um, I took her out, uh, and she did. She did a lot of my work for me. She would herd the cattle for me, and really? she was just a great, great friend. I had this old Ford pickup truck that um, that I used to do the cattle in, and she practically lived in that truck. She loved it. And wherever I went, she had to go. And she was just the sweetest, sweetest dog. And um, we were very close. Um, did, we did probably just, she'd go to work with me. She would uh, um, just, you know, I had a hard time not going anywhere without her. <laughs> but, um, did you train her to be able to, or do they know automatically how to herd and do She things? was already pretty much trained, and I don't know how she got it, but uh, my friend, uh, uh, his name was John, um, he had gotten her, and he was, I was, I was the community manager, like a city manager, and he was a police chief, and um, he said, he said, I, this dog might be able to help you, and Sure enough, she was great. I don't really know how old she actually was when I got her, but I had her for several years. And um, here's a picture. Oh, uh, I miss her just looking at her. <laughs> Those eyes are amazing. And um, wow. she was so smart. She knew everything I was going to do. Uh, it seemed like uh, I would just look at her, and she knew it was time to load up in the truck. And and um, but what happened is she, she passed away in uh, 2001 and just broke my heart when it happened. And I had the unfortunate experience of having a massive heart attack in Phoenix, Arizona, where I passed. I actually died. And um, I was clinically dead for about 45 minutes. And during that time period, I'd had a life review, which was a reckoning for me personally. And it's changed my whole life, shook me up. But um, during the, inter during the um, life review, I noticed something fidgeting off on the right. I couldn't look at the higher power. I mean, but I looked, and there was my dog, Scooter. Oh. She was fidgeting. She was so happy to see me, and she couldn't come to me. But um, I, I was. It was so so good to see her. Uh, and you know, I think she's with me all the time, right yeah. now. Yeah, I do too. I I feel that she, as we're talking, she's with you. There's a there's such a loyalty and sweetness toward you and appreciation because you took her in. Was she about seven years old when you got her? Yes, I think so. Yeah. yeah. And you, and she just loved being near you and she had certain little toys that you would put near and she just loved your presence. She just appreciated you so much. And, uh, you know, just before she died, um, I'd got, I'd gotten a ton of hay and I loaded it in my truck and of course she was there and and I knew she she actually came she would sit next to me on the seat of the truck and and put her head on my on my uh, leg as I was driving or chin on my head and just I was petting her and stuff and and it was such a loss um, and quite frankly. I walk the beach very, I live on, on a home on the beach and I kind of feel like she walks with me when I'm walking the beach. Actually, I think there's more than her. I think there's a, I have a whole herd following me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dog lover. I'm positive of that. I still keep like uh, a little um, piece of furniture right at the foot of my bed where a dog could jump up and then jump up onto the bed from there. Right? I've kept it there all these years. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I do it, but sometimes I feel like she, I can actually feel like her spirit jumping up on the bed, and I can actually feel feel some presence 
laying next to my legs or sometimes in between my legs, the indentation of the covers and stuff like that. And, um, and just how many, how many years has it been now, Robert, that she's passed? Uh, 2001, it's been 19 years. Actually, this is 2021. It's almost 20 years. And, and I've had other, I've had one other dog since then that uh, was very close to me too. His name was Harley, and he was an Australian Shepherd, uh, Blue Heeler mix. He was the same way towards me, and um, I feel his presence too. Um, I did not know that where you go to have your life review in the afterlife that there were animals there. I had no, I had no idea. It's totally changed my life. Um, it gives you something to look forward to, and, and it makes you really think about your relationship with your pets. Um, I had a cat named Tula that she lived to be 19 years old. That was just, she was special too, and um, she was still alive when, when I had passed, but I, I look forward to seeing her. Um, yeah, it's... it's um, I don't know if other people talk about this uh, with you or with uh, any any other uh, any other shows or whatever, but um, I experienced it, and That's it was it was a great feeling. Great so feeling. Do you have a light source too, like you know how light bodies. I mean, it's like almost like an exuding light. How did you perceive her when you saw her in the uh, other realm? Uh, I'm going to be honest. I just noticed her. I, I wasn't too worked up about the details. It still bothers me to even talk about it because I had, I had gone through a reckoning for my life review and it was not very pleasant for me personally. Um, I think it had a lot to do with my background as a retired policeman and having a lot of power in my life, um, and how it affected people. But I saw her. That's all I can tell you. I saw her. I knew it was her. We made eye contact, and I knew she could. She couldn't come to me. I don't understand the reasoning for that. Maybe it. It was. Maybe they knew I was going to go back. I don't. Yeah. Know. Well, sure that on some level. Uh, I mean, God didn't give her the go ahead. Um, that's probably why. Because, but you know that she would have come to you if it would have been your time. Absolutely. It would have been joyful. Um, it's like, what is it? Certain people can't go past a certain thing. I couldn't go past a tree. I couldn't go past a tree. I couldn't go past this pond and this tree. I think it's the tree of life. I couldn't go past it. Um, and I think that, you know, that you, she couldn't, she couldn't come over any further probably. But the fact she gave you so much comfort, isn't that great to know that everybody can know that they're going to see their, their pets, whether they're rabbits or birds, or, or it could be, you know, an ant farm. It doesn't matter. I mean, you get whatever pets that you had. Well, it, it, it totally changed my life because I ended up volunteering for a humane society. And uh, actually, I ended up being president of the humane society for a few years. And it was a no-kill um, oh. shelter in uh, you get people that, uh, I remember this one lady was had terminal cancer. All she worried about was what was going to happen to her dog. And we would, we would place, try and find homes for, uh, for, for these animals. And um, so some humane societies do these types of things. And, and um, what I have done a volunteer work for the humane society before my uh, near death experience, I don't know, but I know now I would never, I, I look at animals just totally different. I mean, I always loved them and cared for them, but um, they're, they're with us. They are with us and they, and they're so, they were so a part of us and so soulful. And to me that they're just, they're just love. They don't want anything from us really. I mean, maybe to beat them, but yeah want to be near us and they're just there's such a pureness about animals I, I feel the same way I have a 
a deep love for animals. I connect with them. Um, I just feel like they're very healing. And I, I know I could be having a, you know, a bummer of a day and I'll pet my dog, the fur and something about petting that fur. I just feel like it's going to be okay. Quite frankly, when I walk the beach, I like to walk it alone. And um, sometimes I, I actually talk to her because um, I think she's, I actually think she's with me. And same thing with my other dogs like Harley and uh, I had another dog named Panda. And, you know, just, you just, they're, they're part of your life. And uh, so. They'll always be a part of your life. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Sure, thank you. Thank you for doing this. I hope it's, I hope this uh, comforts some folks that have pets and animals, and um, it's been a real pleasure being able to talk to you about it. Oh, thank you so much, Robert. It will comfort a lot of people because people love their pets. They love them more than their uh, their furry baby, sometimes more than their human baby. So thank you so much. <laughs> that could be. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, also, I was going to tell you that it kept coming through. I know we're, we're done with this segment, but what kept coming through, did you have an old rag? It doesn't, it just feels like a rag that I don't know if you used to use it to like work on the car, but a rag and it became the thing and you did a pull of a pull up thing with a rag. Yes, I did. me the rag. Like it's not a toy. Like is this a toy? <laughs> no, it's the rag. I loved it when he would bring the rag out. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bring the rest of it out. And then the other dog, um, now the, there's an Australian Shepherd, and it almost, I want to almost say this dog looks like gray blue. This dog I'm looking at, it's like a blue tint, like a gray. It's a beautiful, uh, unusual dog. It's got, uh, it, there, which dog am I? There's, you got a, a lot of dogs, but there's a dog that's got like a gray tint to it. And when it's bathed, it looks just this an amazing gray with speckles. Uh, that, that's probably Tweety. Okay. My son named her after, he was a little kid and he liked cartoons and Tweety Bird. He named her Tweety and she, she was awesome. She was an Australian Shepherd also. Wow. When, when I lived at the beach, at a beach house there, uh, that dog had quite a personality. Uh, there was a hamburger stand Sorry. by me. Steel socks. Is that the one that stole socks? Because I'm, I'm yeah, being. Yeah, that's it. That's it. No, I talked to them. They're telling me I would still. I think it was your son's socks. Was a little sock stole the yeah. socks? Yeah. Bad. But I, I actually, okay. there was a hamburger stand by me, and um, I was a single parent at the time. And uh, the dog, uh, I had a tab at, at a cheeseburger stand, a, a hamburger stand right by my house. And I, I told Tony, the guy that owned the, I said, if, if you see Tweety in the back there, uh, just give her one hamburger and put it on my tab. And I would, I would pay it when I got paid the first of the month. It was kind of a, Gosh. she was just kind of like a, a, a happy go lucky. Uh, and, and that way I always knew that, you know, um, she, 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 would end up, she would she would put her foot against the the door the back door of the and Tony would come out and he'd, he'd cook her up a hamburger and give it to her and then put it on my tab and she liked cheese cheeseburgers so I said yeah throw a thing of cheese on it and I'll pay the difference but I uh, I've had some real characters for animals oh but. my gosh bull oh, that's that is so cute. <laughs> I don't know if it was your son, but it was like a game. She would hide the socks, not chew on them, but hide. It's just the same one. Hide the socks. And it was a little That's game. Her. Like, oh, where well, you find the sock? And uh, it was just a little game. That she, she was a sporting dog. I mean, Frisbees. like oh, on the okay. beach. And She was awesome. And I just, um, she lived to be um, probably about 17 years old, too. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I usually keep my dogs a long time and I don't, you know, I've got this rescue Tucker. So I'm hopefully will he'll outlive. He's supposed to, cause I'm really good with making, you know, when dogs live a long time with me, like 19 years, but we'll see how this, you know, if that's up to God and so forth. 
Yeah, that's the great news that our animals will be with us. And what's the deal? I'm being shown like binoculars. Did you ever do like, um, did you either hunt or what's the deal looking at birds, binoculars? What was the, what's the binoculars about? Um, I've never, I've never hunted. I, I just can't kill. I yeah, can't kill. I, I, I can't kill. Uh, I just personally, I can't do it. But I, it doesn't mean I need it. I can't do it either. I could, I could. Uh, I'm seeing. It looks like binoculars are showing me. I said binoculars, like you're looking, and I, it's like you're you're looking for something, and I don't know. Uh, you know what it is? It feels like you're in a car. Did you ever have a dog in a car with you looking through binoculars? I'm sure I did. And it feels like, I feel like I almost want to say it's a German Shepherd. Um, yes. You're, you're, you're not hunting like to kill. You're hunting like you're looking for something, like you're in the surge. And I, you're, I, I know what it is because it's when I go, I was going whale watching and had a German Shepherd. Uh, named Cheyenne that was so Cheyenne's there too Cheyenne yes <laughs> so, uh, and, and so it's an important they're telling me what you did with them and they said it's a really important job we would do this together it was very important because I feel like you're searching for something not like you're the hunt kill but like you're hunting you're searching for something like it was a task it wasn't like just let me look like it was an effort to look for something and she said it was very important and it uh, looks like a German Shepherd, um, really uh, very, very sweet. Um, uh, kind of different, more, uh, it like th this dog liked to be told what to do. It, li it liked it better when you would tell it what to do. Like, go do this, go do that, go do, it felt comfortable in this way. And saw you as the alpha and was fine with that and just like to do whatever you told it to do. It just liked that a lot. And then I'm seeing also it looks like uh it looks like a red ball associated with this dog. Uh, a, a small ball. That's that's possible. I yeah. And so, yeah, it's funny how they think about these simple little things that we that you do together as really like that that was an important job. I used to like I still go whale watching. I mean, I, I, I live in a place where whales are. Wow, that's I just, amazing. Yeah, I love to do that, and I take photographs of whales. And um, you should see my photographs. I get some oh, great I would love to see them. You should do, you know, I was thinking the other day, you really should do like a, you could even do like a virtual art gallery thingy, you know, showing your favorites um, because um, people get, you know, could get so much out of it, so much joy looking at it. <laughs> Um, but your dog's still doing that with you. Uh, I wouldn't, Shepherd. yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me at all. And did you have your first wife? Did she have a wiener dog? There's a dog associated with your first wife. I don't know if it didn't really look like a beagle. I think it's like a dachshund. Early, uh, early on. Cause I don't think that's your kind of dog, no. but I'm seeing it associated with her. Do, would you understand that? Like, I feel like her college years, um, but I, I, I don't know. It's like way back with her. Um, it's funny, you know, how our relatives know, like, if you know, my relatives know your relatives. They all know each other over there. They know all this stuff. The, the dogs all know each other. But there's a Dotson associated indirectly to you uh, through the first wife that I also see, too. Um you got a lot of varmints around you. I do. And, and I almost want to say, like, I think it's a raccoon. I don't know if you, did you ever feed a raccoon like a cat? You thought it was a cat, but it was a raccoon? It's like a, it's like a random wildlife. That's what it feels like, a random wildlife. Um, that uh, coach. I'm not sure, but I've had issues with raccoons in the past. Um, but that's because of where I lived. But um, I've never. Kill. You don't I, kill. No, I, I don't. I, I actually, actually, I would. I had these cages where uh, they're just trapped, they're, and then you yeah. just you just relocate them some yeah. other place, and then they end up back at your place again. <laughs> 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 well, and I think at some point you thought it might have been a cat or there could have been a cat, but the raccoon was eating it. And you know what the message is? Thanks for the food. 
<laughs> random, random raccoon. It's not a possum. It feels like a raccoon. But yeah, we've done that before with squirrels. We had a gang leader squirrel, and he kept, and he was just got, uh, he got really bold. He was going in the back uh, of my house, right up to the back sliding door where I had uh, my herbs and, you know, where I cook and I'll go get them. And he was in there digging and he would just look, he would just look at us and flip us off. I was like, oh my God, he's bold. And then he would just come right up to us and like want to argue with my dogs at the back door. So we had to relocate him. And we, we always, he just cussed us out when we let him out. He just, he didn't like that at all. Hi, I'm Tamara Calder Richardson, and we're doing a special called Love Leader Lessons, and we're going to be talking about puppy love. And I have here a near-death experiencer, an author, and painter, and also a Christ experiencer like me, <laughs> Howard Storm. And he's with Pat, his dog Pat, and I'm here with Tucky, with Tucker. So tell me a little bit about uh, Pat, and you're uh, and a dog lover like me. Yeah, my wife and I belong to the Boykin Rescue League. This breed is Boykin Spaniel. And uh, we got a call one day, and this happens, that there was a dog at a pound that was um, in danger of being, um, you know, uh, put to sleep. And that we should go get him. So I got in the car and I drove over there, and they went and got this guy. And when they brought him out, he leapt up into my arms, which almost knocked me over. Wow. Oh, and he started, licking my, started licking my face. And I said, hmm, we seem to be <laughs> uh, well suited to each other. So I took him home, immediately fell in love. The problem was is that we were fostering him. And um, someone had already put in the word that they wanted to adopt him, which was a wealthy attorney down in Charleston. And so um, this, we kept getting these messages that he was sending a private plane up to pick up Pat. The problem was it was winter, and every time um, we expected the plane to come and get Pat, there would be a snowstorm or something, and the plane would be canceled. So three weeks went by, and so now I'm saying to my wife, um, we can't give up Pat because Pat and I were made for each other. And she says, we have no choice. It's the deal. You know, we were just fostering him, and somebody's already spoken up for him, so we can't have him. So um, finally, a woman from Louisville said, I'll drive him down to Charleston. That's what they do in the rescue league. So um, the day before a woman came to pick up Pat, I went to the pet store, and I had a metal tag made with my name and phone number on it and put it on his collar. And I also had him chipped with my name and phone number. Oh, no. And then I took Pat and I did this. Okay. Pat, you never listen to me and don't understand me, but you've got to listen and understand now. And I told him face to face, nose to nose, I said, someone's going to come and take you, but you don't, you belong to me and I belong to you. The minute you get a chance, run away and run and run and run and don't stop until you can't run any further. Yeah. Tell and me. find a good home and they're gonna give me a phone call and I'll come and get you and then we'll never be apart again. <gasps> That's what oh I told him. Oh my gosh, yeah, cause he's so, chipped and you had the tag. Yeah. yeah, so Thursday morning, this woman shows up in the morning, takes Pat. I'm in the house weeping like a baby and my wife's like, you know, sorry, but that was the deal. You know, you can't have them and anyways, so, Monday night, he was taken on Thursday morning. Monday night, I get a phone call from um, 9 o'clock at night. Hi, Mr. Storm? I go, yeah. No, this, I'm doing my Kentucky thing here. She goes, we got your dog, Pat, here. You want to come and get him? And I said, <laughs> I sure do. Uh, where, where are you all at? And she says, well, I'm da-da-da. And I said, I don't rightly know where that is. Where is that? And she says, oh, we're just uh, about an hour west of Frankfort, Kentucky. And I'm going, okay. So now i got to lie. But it's, a, it's, a, it's an okay lie. I said, I got, well, the truth was I did have company. My grandson was over. I said, I got some company I can't leave right now. But if I got there in two hours, would that be too late for you? Because it would be around 11 o'clock. Because uh -huh. I figure it's going to take me two hours to yeah. 
Right, right. Said, no, we'll, we'll, we'll wait up for you. So my wife and I immediately hop in the car and off we go. Because it was two hours away. Yeah. So we but go down. It was in wasn't the owner in, like near Charleston? No, no. He was in Kentucky, but near Frankfort. Uh, further away. All west of Frankfort, Kentucky. Okay. So we get down there, and of course, we're down in, in, in like no street lights, no houses, no nothing. You know, the GPS goes out, no signal. Had a terrible time. I mean, I'm stopping at trailers and knocking on dark trailers, knocking on the door, waking okay. people up in the middle of the night, you know, trying to trying to find this place. We finally found it. They're great people. They go and get them. He comes running out and jumps into her arm. Wow. Uh, and I, I took him home. Okay. It was St. Patrick's Day. Patrick was not the name he came with. But I said, Pat, from now on, your name is Patrick after St. Patrick because oh. <laughs> he, he brought you home. Anyways, I just want to um, make a couple points here. Pat, her route would have, take, would have taken her and the dog through Lexington, Kentucky. Wow. So I'm figuring that's where he took off from out of the car. Mm -hmm. Probably stopped for gas or something, and he bolted like I told him to. Uh, he oh. ran, walked from Lexington um, about about an hour west. Now these are bird dogs, and they don't they don't go in straight lines. They smell everything, and they go around in circles, smelling everything. Okay. He went an hour west. It took him several days because he he's a two thousand dollar hunting dog. Beautiful uh, dog. Beautiful. And, that that area is full of hunters. Any any hunter that would have seen him would have tried to snag him because he's you know he's a valuable dog. He was three years old at the time, and uh, no nobody got him. He found some really sweet, kind people who you know their first thought was, well, call the owner and you know return the dog. They didn't want any money or anything. Um, the the whole story is impossible. It's all impossible. And uh, and I got him back, and we've never been apart since. And he's an absolutely wonderful dog. That um, is I don't know if I tell. He, he is totally. He's a he, He's forty pounds, and he's a lap dog. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but his head's. He's he's in my lap, right here. I'm, you know, <laughs> that's his butt. His oh head's my here. gosh! He. I think that's a beautiful story. I mean, it's, it, it should be impossible. It should be. But when he jumped in your lap initially and kissed you, you're like, that's it. Yeah. Yep. That we just is we were meant for each other. Well, yeah, it's right. funny. That soul that, connection with animals is really there. Yeah. Well, his face, his beautiful face. Animals have, have a soul. They've got a spirit. If anyone doesn't believe it, read Psalm 36, verse 6. And it talks about the souls of animals. No. Well, I have a sign above my sofa that says, heaven is a place you get to see every dog you ever own. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't wait. You know, it's funny because I've had uh, different dogs, and I see them playing with Jesus. I said, sorry, I know they're running you, running you, running you out. But, uh, but yeah, with, with Tucker, he's a rescue, and uh, I needed an, a, another Shizu dog to calm down my diva uh, female dog. And I was actually talking to Jesus about it, and he said to go on, you know, he, he, I was looking at the next door, he said, that one. I said, that one, because he looked kind of mangy. And when we got him, he had no ears, no tail. He was very, uh, uh, really bad condition. He had the mange, and my husband said, you better not go and pit take, bring home a mangy dog. Don't do it. <laughs> And you know, honestly, he was, he did have the mange and we took him forever to, you know, put the shampoo and all. And I, so what I did is I uh, went and went to see him. He was in the neighborhood, really super nice people. They were kind of holding him for a while. He apparently had been in and out of homes, like 12 different people's homes. And uh, he, um, he, they, they just, they had a house full of grandkids and this and that. I said, we just can't keep them. And so while I'm talking to the owner, he runs up and jumps on my lap and kisses my face. She goes, he's never done that. And so um, anyhow, I, I, it was about a week later, and I picked him up, and I took him to the vet and got him, you know, the whole thing. And he had worms. He had the mange and brought him home, trimmed him up. And then I realized I thought he was a brown dog. I was like, he's white. 
<laughs> I didn't even know. And so uh, he ended up, and my husband's like, he looks weird with those eyes. There's two different color eyes, blue and brown. I'm like, he doesn't look weird. He's just a little puppy. He said, he looks weird. I'm like, would you stop that? So hold on just a minute. So uh, anyhow, he ended up, he's ended up being the best dog we've had. We had him four years, and now he's got a heart condition. So we've got him on five times during the day, different medicines, you know, and he, and if we do that, he's happy, he's fine, he's not, you know, uncomfortable, and I just keep praying when it's his time that Jesus makes it peaceful, and that, um, but the big thing is, is that out of all the homes he's gone in and out of, is that he knows love now, now he's full, yeah. now he's full of right. so let's put him down, he's a little antsy, <laughs> Yep. So let's see Pat's face. Pat's beautiful. Wow. That is, what a beautiful, beautiful boy. <laughs> what a painting of him. What I, a I have to, my wife said yeah, I should do, I got to do a painting of him. You do, because he looks perfect. I mean, he looks like a perfect looking dog. He's a good looking boy. He is a good looking boy. He is really handsome and, uh, He's just got so much life to him. I, I love that connection that you share. So, you know, pe people don't always understand that you can have a, a soul connection or a soulmate connection with an animal. Yeah, and I try and tell people, he's my teacher because our pets have unconditional love. True. And human beings don't know about that. They have to learn it. It, it takes a long time to cultivate that unconditional love. But he loves unconditionally you know that's true we can learn that from animals because they do and they're loyal almost to uh, a fault um, I had a dog 19 years named Larry I always get these these big big boy names and he was a toy poodle and he was gray he was um, four pounds but in his mind he thought he was a big dog yeah. He acted like a little dude, but he really brilliant, really smart. He would do things just to make me laugh. He was an awesome dog, and he was with me almost 20 years back when we were wow. just starting out and married, and my husband was on the road at the time, and so he was my he was my buddy, and he lived a long time, and the day that he passed, we took him out to go to the bathroom, and he just kind of fell over, and I, he was old. God help him. He looked like Yoda. He had hardly any hair. I mean, and I would take him out to pee because he couldn't see. And, and I wrapped him in a little blanket and held him. And he communicated with me. And he said, um, it's always been about you. And, and he says, I just can't. And I said, it's okay. I love you. I love you. I'll always love you. I said, it's okay. It's okay. His little body was just so frail. I said, it's all right. And so he passed in my arms. And as he did, we kind of shared near-death experiences. I felt him passing through and he communicated, which I didn't expect that, but he did. He, it was almost like a little child. And then he said to me, I want to be a big dog, a big black dog. And I said, well, he said, you can find me. I said, well, I have an apartment, and they don't like big dogs, but you go ahead. I'll see you. But he hung out with me on and off in spirit, seriously, like five years on and off, because I would go to bed, and sometimes I would feel that little, you know, on the bed, yeah. the, you know, and I, I don't, it, it kind of blew me away, like, whoa, like, you know, but I'm like, okay, I know I'm not making this, and my husband would feel it too, and he would be needing and uh, every now and then, you know, I'll feel him around, but uh, he just, um, he just was so loyal. You know, he's just so loyal that I think that uh, our animals, sometimes when we're blue, uh, even when they cross over, they'll kind of, you know, make an appearance like, I love you, yeah. Yeah. offer a little comfort. And uh, I mean, and that's something that we're, we're um, you know, always blended together with our animal. It's funny, I have in our closet, I've got like um, all the dogs in the past, you know, when we have a dog pass, we will, and they're like our family members, we'll get them cremated and then we, you know, have them, you know, wrap up everything. We have them in the closet, so I guess when it's our time that we'll, you know, be together. And I'm thinking, isn't that a strange human thing? Like, why would I do that? But I just want them with me. Yeah. Our, so, uh, all our dogs are all buried. I got a little cemetery in the backyard, and I go you, pick up river river rocks. Oh, so each one has a river rock to mark their their spot. You know. 
Uh, yeah, if we had a little place where we could, uh, like a little honor or like a little garden, that would be, you know, where I could visit them. But that's that's just what we ended up doing. But I, I, I'd i like to know they're near me either if we had some place we could do that in the yard or, or right there. But they're always there with us in our heart. So thank you for sharing that with Pat. Uh, he's beautiful. And what a story. He actually listened to you. Yeah, a lot of times he doesn't listen to me because he likes to do what he wants to do. But that time... He heard me loud and clear. And I, look, I'm not crazy. Dogs don't understand English language. I mean, they understand like, no, come, you know, yeah. ride. You know, I mean, he, they understand like a, 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 a consonant or a vowel or something like that. But they don't, they don't, you know, you give them a sentence, they don't know what you're talking about. He, he totally got, he did exactly what I told him to do. Well, I think it was your intentions too, because, you know, your, in, your intention with the words and you probably you know, showed visuals like run away, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's a soul thing. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Did the guy who was going to get him, did he ever come back and look for him? He wouldn't have known to look. Well, Oh, oh boy, here we go. A uh, white well, line. <laughs> we never, we never told anybody that I got him. Got it. We told him, I mean, they knew when he ran away. And then, uh, when I went down and got him on Monday night, um, I forgot to tell anybody that I went and got him. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, he's your baby, and it was a, it was a connection, and it's, everything worked out the way that it was supposed to. So thanks for sharing that your puppy love story. That's beautiful. That is my guy. Yeah, he is your guy. Well, thanks, Howard. Okay. So I know a lot of people have a lot of connection with their canines, and we have Ingrid Honkala here today to tell us about your story about your, your sweet uh, family pet and what happened in your communication with the afterlife with him. Oh, thank you for having me here. He's so adorable. <laughs> Hi, Tamara, you're amazing. Yes, yes. And I, I had my dog. His name was Miko. Oh, he was with us since... Oh my God, I mean, he was with us for 16 years. And he passed oh, wow. two years ago. And he, at the end, he was so sick, he could barely walk. He was in a lot of pain. And then he started to, um, when he went to the bathroom, he was now bleeding. So the doctor oh, said, gosh. I mean, he is dead. I mean, he's, uh, he's just pretty much his pain. What was wrong with him? I, I, I think he, he was really all he had on yeah. earth. And now when he started to do blood, they just thought he must have cancer. Oh, dear God. Okay. Uh, he was 16 years old, so he was already like really yeah. old. And then it's when the, the doctor said, I think it's time to just to make the decision to put him to sleep. And I just couldn't do it. I tried a few yeah. times. I just it would call and cancel. I cannot do this. I can't. But this is a moment where I had to stop and realize, you know, this is not about us anymore. You see, he's not wanting to leave. His love for us, I just felt he was <laughs> so attached to us. We were so attached to him. And I said, no, he's suffering too much. So, but I wanted to do it good. And uh, and just, I didn't want to bring him to the doctor office because he actually hated to go there. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do the whole procedure in our house where he was with his bed, with his right, toys. With it, right, mm -hmm. with all his little things. Mm -hmm. And his own environment. So I just, uh, the appointment was, was made. And, and the day that the doctor was going to come, my dog became more active. It's like, what? I had not seen him like that. And I just started to feel like maybe, maybe, maybe I, mean, I shouldn't do this. But no, he started to go to the door. And the side door, it has glass. So he was looking through the, the door, like the window, like he really? knew like someone was coming. Okay. I just had the sense he knows, he knows. And then, but he was peaceful. He'll go to the window and go lie down, go to the window and go lie down. And then my best friend came because I told her I cannot do this alone. And my husband was overseas. So I, my oh. son was at a school because we didn't want him to. Be oh there for that. So, and now my dog is barking, but not my other. <laughs> no, he's going to chime in. <laughs> <laughs> so at that moment, like, um, 
I just called her, she came and we were together and the doctor arrived and right there, right a moment before the doctor arrived, there was a noise in the window, like something was like knocking. And I was like, what is knocking? And when I turned, it, this animal was so big that I thought it was a bird knocking the window. And then we came like closer and she's like, my friend is like, no, it's not a bird, it's a dragonfly. Huh. And it was a really big, I never saw a dragonfly this big. And it's when I thought they're coming for him. The sense was like, beautiful. this, this is just the sense of the beings of light are here to take him. Yeah. And then the doctor arrived and then they did the same. The first thing that is like, a, they sedate, they put yeah. like a tranquilizer and then to relax him. Relax. And he was lying on my legs and, and I just, hug him and I started to cry and then I saw at that moment I have what is called a shared that experience with my dog oh. so what I what happened is I, I went into meditation I was holding him I, I closed my eyes and I saw him running like in this long 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 the road and at the end of the road there was a bridge and he came running now as he ran he started to turn young like the time when he was young and active and with all his energy and I just saw him now moving and, but when he was about to cross the bridge, he stopped. And when he stopped, he turned and looked at me and I, it was now the, the sensing, oh, he doesn't want to leave us. He doesn't want to go. And at that moment I was in my meditation, I told him, just go and, okay. and you can go, we are okay. It's okay. Then at that moment, I, I opened my eyes and he was looking at me and he's supposed to be under this very, very heavy uh, medicine. And no, he, he was looking at me and it was the sense uh -huh. like, wow, he's with me right now. And, and at that moment, the doctor came, put the other medicine for him now to leave. He was completely calm. The doctor said that he might just shake or some nothing. He just was completely calm. And at that moment, I closed my eyes again. And it's when he crossed the bridge. I saw the crossing. Oh, of the bridge. wow. And when he crossed the bridge, at that moment, Tamara, I was holding him in my arms. And I was crying. And the moment he crossed the bridge, I feel the sense that something left this body, like his soul. <sighs> he left the body. And the whole room, Wow. It came full, full with his presence. It was like the energy of his presence was in the entire room. And I now was completely able to have the sense of like, oh, I can't detach from this body. He's not in his body. Well, his little body was given way. Yeah, and I it opened my eyes. not good anymore. Yes, and I said to the doctor, you can take the body. He's not there anymore. And it was that sense of like, he's everywhere, he's everywhere. And then the day just, it was the, the moment they left all that and, and I had to go and I, and I stopped crying. I just felt that sense of complete love. And then I had to go get my son. I picked him from a school. I told him that Miko was gone, all that. He was crying. We came home. He knew this was gone, but I, I didn't want him to just be there seen it because he was too sad and mm -hmm. but he came home and I said let's go do a little prayer I have my altar we sat there in the altar we were in complete silence in the house and when we were praying for for Miko suddenly the tv in the living room turned on full volume and because, it, and David had asked me, you think, you think Miko's with us? And when the TV went on full volume, we were shocked. Like, yes. <laughs> That's him. And it was amazing because that was the thing he loved to do the most with my son, David, watch TV. Wow. They will cuddle in the couch and watch TV for hours. Oh, that's so cute. So that was an amazing message. And after that, the other thing that my son and him always would, my, my son would have this argument with the dog because he will 
with all his little soldiers, so all his little Legos and little figures standing on the floor and the dog will come when he was alive and just, just drop all the toys on the floor and they'd be, mommy, look what Miko's doing. And then now that he's passed, one thing to show David that he was there, yeah. was to, we will feel the presence of, of the dog in the room and all the toys will fall. So David now wasn't, wasn't mad about it. He was happy to say, mommy, look, Miko is dropping the toys again. Just to let you know. And you, didn't you say that he hung around for, I mean, he comes in and out still, but you said a year, wasn't it? Yes, yes. More than a year. He was very present. And, and there was a moment uh, two years ago when my uh, grandfather was going to pass. And we really didn't know he was going to pass that day. But I felt that day the presence of, of my entire family was there gathered and the dog was there too. Wow. And that, yeah. that night, I, he always had this little bell in his neck and I heard the bell. And I said in the middle of the night, I said, oh, Miko's here, Miko's here. And then I just have these things. I, I was like, I wanted a validation that he was actually there at night. And then um, very early in the morning, my, my sister said, look what I received in my phone last night. And it was a picture of a dog that looked exactly, exactly like my dog. And like the Mika. picture, yeah, had got to Miko, had got to her phone around the same time. I don't know if we can see it here in the computer, but this was. I can. My dog. That's Miko? Yes. Oh, wow. And what this a handsome is a dog. Let me show you the picture that came. Look at this dog. Oh my gosh, it's identical. It's ex and look. Um, it's crazy, the same markings and everything. Exactly. So I, I understood all wow. of this. And the, and the dog in the picture actually was um, recognized. Oh, it's, it's a beautiful thing because the dog saved the life of the baby in the home. So it was the sense for me like, oh. Mom, I'm, I'm doing good job. I'm doing. Oh. I'm being an angel. I'm doing, I'm doing what? Oh. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. Dogs do come through a lot with people, even in, in readings, but they'll do that for support. They're very loyal. Even after they've gone, <laughs> they just care about our happiness. So I just think there's such a gift uh, from God. So thank you so much for sharing that story, Ingrid. Thanks for being here. And tell us about your, your dog, your puppy love story. Oh, I have a puppy love. I do. I hadn't had a dog in a long time because I'm actually allergic to dogs. And so I had to stop having dogs. And then when I was an associate pastor in this church, one of the par parishioners came to me and said, we're moving to Texas and can you look after our dog? Now the backstory was that I didn't know that the boy, the son had chosen this dog after doing lots of research and chose an Arctic dog and they couldn't bring the dog with them to Texas. And suddenly the date had the dog for two months and the day they had to give up the dog. And they, they're like, we don't know what to do. Dad's transferred Who, to ask the young minister. So I went and I visited this dog and he's a Norwegian elk hound. And he looks like a husky with a curly white tail and black fur and, and thick two layers of coat. And they just couldn't take him. So I said, all right, I'll take your dog and um, I will find a home for your dog. So I got home that day uh, and on the way, I stopped at the bank, and I and at, when I opened the the door to get out, the dog bolted. I jumped on the dog, and I got in a dog fight in the bank parking lot. I tore my suit knee. I wrestled the dog to the ground. I held the ground the dog down, and I stuffed him back in the car. <laughs> that afternoon, I got home. I, I I opened the door, and the dog bolts. I didn't even have a chance to get a leash on it, and I'm like, okay, so I I. I, I changed my clothes. No, no, no. What happened is I put it on a leash. I brought it to the yard. I, I, la I tied it up. I went in the house. I changed my clothes, put on my shorts, went outside, unleashed the dog, and the dog wouldn't let me within four feet of him. And I, I couldn't catch this dog. And, it, it, and when I ran, I decided I'll sprint. I'll see if it follows me. It runs alongside me. I'm at a full sprint. It reaches up behind my knee 
with its mouth open and lightly grabs my bone and slides its incisors down to my Achilles tendon at this lightest slight touch and ran off, sat down and stared at me, telling me, I could take you down. What yeah, do you yeah. That? that was to let you know I'm in charge. So I couldn't get the dog in the house for a month. I couldn't, the dog wouldn't come in the house. The dog was free, afraid of linoleum, would not come in the back door. So finally, this cold, <laughs> rainy November day, a pouring rain, the dog's shivering outside. We left the dog in the house. And the dog is, is the most incredible breed I'd ever met in my life. I got to know this dog, and this dog became my friend. The dog would stand on its hind legs in the woods and, and whistle through its throat like a wild animal to call me to it. And it would leave me, I would go for an hour or two hour hike, and it would leave me and it would track me. And it would pop ahead of me, 25 feet ahead of me, and sneak in. People would come to my back door, and, and the dog would do nothing and stand next to them silently. But if they touched the doorknob, it nipped him. One day, one day, sleeping in our bedroom on my little futon bed, somebody tried to break in our, I was a pastor in a suburban urban neighborhood, and the, someone tried to break in our house and the dog stood up and just stood there and looked at me and I said, go get him. And down the stairs. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I'm always, go get him, boy. <laughs> <laughs> the dog never touched the stairs on the way down. One long leap wow. and out the door. And, and the dog would disappear for a couple days at a time sometimes and go off on a walkabout. So, Wow. We moved. To, this is all. We became. We became dear buddies. This dog and I. And this dog. I allowed this dog to have this immense amount of liberty. I never. Yeah. I, when I when I moved to Maine and I live on, on on this point of land, you know, there's a lot of people who live around here. Relatively speaking, it's still pretty rural. But I never chained my dog. I never leashed my dog. Let my dog run off and um, come. We would come home when it felt like it, and uh, we became best buddies. And so then I had this dog 14 years, and I was I could walk. Okay, I, I, the dog would come to church with me. All right, so I was living on this. I was living on, living on this island. Uh, this is before we moved to where we lived now. And the dog sometimes would come into the church in the middle of the service and come up and sit with me. And then um, people, the parishioners were like. You, you can't let your dog in here. I'm like, well, I, don't I'm tell not, him that. <laughs> like, you know, the, the dog is, I can't make the dog not come in. How big is it? Like a hundred pound dog? I mean, it's well, a big dog. I would say it's like 85 probably. It's small, a little smaller than a husky. It's got this black coat that's sort of zebra striped and this super tight curly black tail and little ear puffs, black ear puffs. But, it, but when it's shed, I had to, I had to like get a, a yard rake to rake the fur out. You could stuff a pillow, like a pillowcase. You could wow. stuff with the under fur, uh, and so we became. Uh, it was the most loyal dog I'd ever had in my life. When I lived, when I lived in New Haven, I could, I could walk in the worst neighborhood, and the dog could, didn't have to be on a leash with me. The dog would stay with me um, when we were walking together, and. But the same was true in my going to stores with me in the town I live in. But but the dog had its own his the dog's name. I should tell you the dog's yes, name. Yes, tell me. The dog's name is was Tom Jode. And Tom Jode was a character in The Grapes of Wrath the, uh, by John Steinbeck, and maybe you've read that book. Um, Long time ago. But I called I called the dog Jode. So Jode and I were best friends, and we were friends for a long time. Uh, my dog, uh, loyal to me. Um, so so loyal to me when we were having our first baby, I dared not leave the dog alone in the room with the the child for fear that the dog would be jealous. Right. But eventually, the dog became the dog learned to Tom Jode avoided my kids, like would go off on his own until they were in bed, and then come and sit on my feet, but never bothered them really. And so one day, and here's what happened. Okay. One day, Tom, Tom, uh, Jode, I don't want to call him Tom because I never did. Jode uh, got really sick, uh, maybe 14 years old. And I, I knew something was wrong with him, but I didn't know what. He's just sitting under the kitchen table and hiding in the bushes, that sort of thing. Oh, and not normal behavior. Not normal behavior. And then Jode had been about 14 years old at this point, And 
And I got up the next morning and I couldn't find Jode. And I've got a, I live on an acre of land and with a, with a forest trust next to us and a preserve beyond that. Lovely. Um, and, and so I, I couldn't find the dog. And so, and, and in my front yard is a, a fire pond that is what the fire department calls it, but it's actually a, it's a naturalized 13 foot, um, I don't know, it's a it's a decent sized little pond that's pretty deep that that's been naturalized dragonflies, uh, gold rye, uh, uh, all sorts of flowers. And so I I finally decided after not being able to find Tom uh, Tom Jode all day, to look in the pond, and there he was. Oh my god! And and my only my only thinking was that that he died of a heart attack and he and he, he, he Nor Norwegian elk hounds are not really swimmers. Because in the Arctic, getting wet means dying, and so the, okay. they, the, he was never really a, a water dog. And how he ended up in the pond, I can't guess unless he went in on purpose. It seemed that's the you know it, it seemed huh. to me. I mean, so rare is a is this breed. At least my dog would not go above his knees in the water, no matter what. And so I didn't know what to do, and I couldn't get him out myself. And my neighbor came over and helped me get him out. And I dug a hole up on the property, and I put Jode in it. And somebody gave me a hibiscus. I know not hibiscus, a hydrangea. I'm sorry, a hydrangea. hydrangea. I love hydrangeas. Yeah. yeah. And so I planted the hydrangea on top of it, and and I, and then I started hearing him at night. And so I'd be lying, I'd be lying, we'd be, we'd be lying in the bed and we'd hear him walking down the hall, click, 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 because click, his toenails, he had long toenails, yeah. click, 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 down the hallway, into the room. Um, and that's kind of basically what happened for a long period of time. He would cause it, come and visit us. He wasn't How? allowed on the bed because I was allergic to dogs, so uh -huh. no dog on the bed. Um, but he would come and he would, he'd be in the room here and lie down and his jingle jangle of his, you know, his, his collar. Dinkle, 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 dinkle. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and he didn't like his collar. So, um, uh, he, he, we took it often as often as we could. And, but anyway, so, so you heard him on, I guess, what is it? The linoleum or hardwood floors, the little nails. Yeah. How on the hardwood floor. How long did this last? Was it years or no? Months? No, it was it was less than a year, easily less than a year, and it wasn't all the time. It was just once in a while. And I and I, what I said with, about the dangle dangle that was my wife's dog. So after after because Tom, I was like, wait a minute, Tom had Joe had such a thick neck of hair. We could we took the I took the collar from every night for his whole life. He was with me. He never wore a collar in the house ever. He had and and oftentimes he wouldn't even wear one outside in the yard. Um, because he didn't take off that uh, that yeah. often. But yeah. anyway, so my wife's poodle would do the same thing. My wife, a few years later, we had the standard poodle and the click, 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 and only with uh, Sophia, was the dog's name, we could hear the jingle jangle coming down the hall. And um, I don't know if the dog ever got up, because that was my wife's dog, and I don't know if the dog ever got up on the bed with her, but um, I'm not sure. I don't think so. I think he just lay down in the room. And so how long did that go on with your wife's dog? That was a while too. And they never showed up at the same time. We just, so we're just assuming that these are, you know, that the noises that we heard were, were the different dogs. I can't prove it to anybody. It just, right. you know, I, I, ha, we live in a house where there's, where you can where, where sometimes you hear animals outside. And so hearing animals is not an unusual thing. So we're always kind of attuned to hearing animals. Um, especially if, if there if there's a red squirrel in the in the in the attic, you know if we, we so if there's an a, we're always looking for, lis, listening for animals because um, living in the wild houses as you know are a little porous. Uh, right, so it. You, it, they can echo. Wow! And so let me ask you this: It's funny when I had um, especially you know other dogs and so forth, but one in particular. I had 20 years, uh, Larry, and I got him two years uh, after being back from college and just had gotten married and my husband had to travel. So I got this poodle. He said, whatever you do, don't get a poodle, please. <laughs> don't get, I mean, you know, <laughs> and don't get a little one, please. But we were in an apartment, so that's exactly what I got. And he, but his, his spirit, his personality was, um, it, it, he was a, a toy poodle, really handsome, like perfectly. Yep. Really. He had a toy poodle. They're they're nice dogs. 
Yeah, perfect looking specimen at Gray. And he knew he was good looking. Like he could have won a show. And he was, uh, he knew that. He knew he looked good. <laughs> well, and they're so, smart. They're like, I look good. He was, he was really smart, but he, uh, he had a, he was, uh, uh, we became very close and he became, he was with me all the time, whatever I did. And this went on about 20 years and he, uh, had a great personality and people said, man, he's, he's got a great, he's got a big personality. He always thought he was a bigger dog and he was smaller and people would want to pet him like, Oh, look how cute. And he would look like, Hey, respect the fur, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, but so when he passed, I mean, seriously, every now and then I'll hear him, but I will hear the, the, that, that sound and the, the pressure, the weight that he had, it's smaller than the dogs I have now. It's lighter. Mm -hmm. And I would hear him come down the hall. But what was uh, cool is he would get on the bed because he did sleep with me in the bed because he was little. And he'll curl up and I, will, I would feel it. I felt it probably the, the last time he's been gone years, maybe eight years uh, or more. Uh, I felt it about a year ago. Every now and then he'll show up. And I think for me, and I was going to ask you what you think with your animals. Uh, I don't think they're ever truly really gone like our loved ones in spirit. Um, I think that they're aware of us and we'll definitely get to see them again. But I think they show up like in times of distress or, um, uh, you know, sadness or moments of sadness, or you just need encouragement. I think that's when they show up because they're so freaking loyal. They're just so loyal, even beyond the other side. So I think that's why he appears. I think at the beginning he was so attached to me that that loyalty goes on. I do think he's totally, you know, crossed over. I mean, he's yeah. not like a ghost dog or anything, but I do think that he visits just, um, just, just out of love, really, just to just support. Why do you think that the dogs do when people, this is a common thing, people here in their, you know, or my mom's even felt her cat walking around uh, the bed, the cat's been gone. So uh, I think they visit us out of the love. Why do you think that is? Why do you that think sounds, you, That sounds right to me. Yeah, well, we have that relationship, so that's how they visit. So tell me, I love your story, you know, about Tom, uh, Jode, but... You've got some more critter stories. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 oh, I make friends with animals fairly easily, and especially, well, lots of people make friends with chickadees. Chickadee, black cap chickadees in New England are famous for their friendliness, uh, and I, they visit me frequently. They come into my studio. I've got a bird feeder right out in front of my, when my door is open, right? I'm gesturing off to the door that's right here, and they'll, I, I have put food on my desk. They come and they sit on my computer. They sit on my microphone. They, they sometimes once in a while land on my head, um, and I, I, I got so that the chipmunks started coming in as well, and they, they were extraordinarily friendly, and so I, I have a a little bowl right here it's my singing bowl yeah. and i would put seed in it and the chipmunk would come and sit on my desk uh, wow. i send you a picture of that uh, wow and it, and it, we got to be such good buddies this this year that i cut a one inch uh hole through my six inch studio wall and put a black pipe in a couple of corks uh, so that i didn't have to leave the door open when the weather got cold uh, so we, for a while, until until hibernation season came, which came pretty quickly thereafter, uh, the, the chipmunk would come in through its private little doorway and um, come up and visit me on my desk. Um, and, and, one, and once in a while, the chickadees, when I, I would open the door and everybody would be here, be like this crowd. It's like Snow White. <laughs> like well, you know, my my daughter my daughter uh, calls me Snow White. That's my nickname. That's oh, one of my nicknames. Oh, is Snow White. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> funny. Okay, so I nailed that one right. You well, did. <laughs> I nailed that one right. So uh, it's it's funny that uh, we were talking about you know um, beforehand that people that have had experienced the light, you know, sometimes you know people are are drawn to people like us because they like what's that? But so are animals. And yeah. um, because it's um, they they also are, are God's creatures and they're also love. Um, one of the things that I would never forget and this is very quick, but it's uh, it just kind of it was just like, wow. Um, but why not? Uh, I was taking a, a course several years ago. at Tony Stock was a medium. There were other mediums there. And for some reason, I don't know why we already did this eight hours for the day, practicing different types of, uh, you know, reading each other and whatever. We decide we're going to go back to someone's ho within the hotel room. It was like six of us, and we're going to practice animals. 
Okay. So we had a guy's dove come through. That was pretty amazing because uh, it was a touching story for the guy. I had, and it used to have, um, it was uh, a chameleon, you know, where the eyes woo, go around crazy. And he would sit on my finger and eat the mealworms. And I just knew his name was Oscar. It's, I just thought that fit him with the big O and uh, with, you know, the eyes, those big round eyes. And so he would sit on my finger and eat the mealworms. And I just knew he was sweet on me. I just knew that. Mm -hmm. And so he did. He came through. And I'm thinking, well, why not? He's one of God's creatures. And what was funny that Larry, that he always came through to other mediums, but what was really funny, and this was just completely evidential and it blew my mind and somewhat a little embarrassing. So this lady, she, um, it was funny. She actually, her mediumship popped up later in life when she was doing the Monroe Institute and the levels and boop, it just popped up. And so she was saying, yeah, there's a great dog here, blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah, okay. He shows up all the time. And she said, you cut him in a Colonel Sanders style. And we did. We cut him looking like, and I'm like, nobody would know that. But we did. We would always say, well, okay, we got to cut him in the Colonel Sanders style. We'd have the little mustache. Goatee. The little goatee like Colonel Sanders. <laughs> right, like the right. bucket. And we would say that. And I'm like, oh, my God. And then we, I never told anyone this because I probably sound like a horrible person, but we would give him in a shot glass beer because he thought he was a dude, you know, and like a, like a big dude, like a big dog. And I would give him a little shot glass and he thought he was something else. And so she said, you gave him beer? I went, uh, yes. <laughs> and so of course my husband goes, he liked whiskey better. Uh, but, <laughs> but yeah, coming through, and he thought, you know, that's part of him being part of the tribe. He thought that was cool. So it's, it's amazing how many times they come through because they're, they're connected to us. We don't lose that. You know, they're still a part of us. And I, I think there's a special relationship with animals. because They really just don't want anything from you. They really don't. They just want to hang. Yeah. And be not, you know, and we can learn, I think dogs, uh, well, animals, but we were speaking about puppy love, so we'll stick with dogs. I mean, you know, cats and other animals as well. Yes. But they can be our teachers, you know, because they teach us patience, unconditional love. Mm. Um, and then we're taking care of them. So, um, you know, that's a humbling to be able to, you know, so there's so much that we can learn from them. My dog, um, Tom, Tom Joe was a very particularly giving dog in a way that that he could give which was protection and because not not only did joe take his uh, job seriously in the house he also protected the garden so we oh, have yeah. a vegetable garden oh yeah he was he would some nights he'd he'd spend outside on but like i'm staying out tonight peter like, really oh, what because okay, of okay. Or, or, well, or well fox mostly deer the deer would come in and but they wouldn't come by when when they they stopped coming by, um, and so he he was. There was this. I think we can have symbiotic relationships with animals, and some of what they give us is love and caring and unconditional love. Um, but they can also give us what they can give us, what they're able to give us. The contribu contribution to the household right. is the way is the way yeah, it, it seemed to me. I agree, and it sounds like that. And depending on the personality. Uh, is what you would get. Uh, Larry was funny. He would jump from sofa to chair to sofa to chair, and he goes. <laughs> and he would look at you, and he go, cha cha cha, and then he would, and then he would go, and then he would look at, he would look, and he would uh, climb me down, and then he would bolt as fast as he could, he would, just to make me laugh. So he was the comedian, uh, entertainment. <laughs> he was the entertainment, and he was good at it. He was, That's with, great. yeah. And uh, like I have a dog now, Abby, and she's uh, a diva, and she's a shizu. And, and she's just, it's all about her, but she is the best watchdog I've ever had. She's an alpha. And if someone tried to come in, she would, she would tear them up. I mean, she's a, a very pretty little girl, but she's she, out of all the boys, she's the alpha. Yeah. And that's, what, that's her job and nothing gets passed. We know everything. We know if anyone's even close at all, because we're about an acre and a half, but we know we're off the road. Yeah. And so there's no one that really should be out here. It would be odd to be on our porch at night, like something's gone wrong if right. they're here because we're too far away. Yeah. And so she tells us with everything. So uh, yeah, they do bring different qualities, but don't we do that with people? Completely. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think, you know, sometimes I'm trying to still figure out with certain people. Now, what do I bring them? <laughs> 
<laughs> what is it? So, well, look, thank you so much for your, your animal stories and, and your critter stories. And I know that uh, you probably have so much more. You're always a delight. And just thanks for your time, Peter. Thanks, Tamara. It's a pleasure every time. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Nancy. Thank you, Tamara. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, tell us, you know, I'm so excited. You said that you had some amazing stories with your, with your pets. So I know you said you have uh, Charlie and Sage and Finn. So tell us a little bit about uh, these uh, soulful experiences you've had with your dogs. I will. Um, well, first of all, the, the first story is relatively short. We had Charlie, who was a little Cairn Terrier. We had him for about 15 years. He was a wonderful little dog. And unfortunately, he passed away. And uh, my husband and I were sitting outside one night and uh, shortly after he passed. And a shooting star went overhead. And I said, oh my God, I just asked Charlie to send me a shooting star as a sign that he was, you know, still around and, uh, you know, up in heaven. And my husband said, you're kidding. I did too. <laughs> so that's the, that's our the wow, quick that's story beautiful. here about Charlie. So he did send us a sign, but I have a, a more recent story, uh, that I call a spirit setup and okay. it involves, uh, actually two, two dogs. And um, wow. the, the, this was about three years after uh, Charlie had passed away. And we had finally decided to get another dog. This was during the beginning of COVID. And we got a sheep -a doodle and we, I wanted to name this dog Petunia, but he was a boy. And my husband said, there's no way we're naming this dog Petunia. So we ended up calling him Finn. And I said, but his middle name is Petunia. <laughs> so Finn Petunia. Now, Finn was a great dog. We loved him. Uh, you know, he was a puppy, had puppy energy and so forth. But at some point, I just began to feel that I was going to separate from this dog. This dog okay. was not meant to be my dog. And so... Um, at some point, I just said, we have to rehome him. And I, you know, I didn't really put a whole lot of thought into it. It was almost, when I think back to it now, I think how robotic it was. So I, one day I went online, I created a flyer, I put it up, I started getting calls. And before you know it, um, the dog was, uh, we had a couple call us about the dog and they wanted him very badly. But I knew that the dog was, going to go to a family but against my better judgment the first couple that called who didn't have kids came to get him and long story short they decided he was not the dog for them and i had been praying very hard before they came please let this be the right the right family for him to go to well that didn't turn out uh that same day i immediately called the next family that i had on my list the next person and it was a family and they ended up with the dog and they were a wonderful wonderful family for him um, and we became friends with the family so they had invited us over um, this was a little earlier when we could still be outside but they invited us over to come and see Finn and visit with him and while we were over there um, I said to her to the mom I said, did I ever tell you what Finn's middle name was? And she goes, no. And uh, the kids were all standing around. I said, well, it's Petunia. And the kids were like, oh, mom. And I'm like, what, what? And she said, oh, my goodness. She goes, my family has a tradition of calling all the babies in the family, the new babies up into a certain age, Petunia. So her family had something with this name, Petunia. And you know, the dog <laughs> was just meant to go to them. Um, and there are some Perfect. other nuances with the family and uh, some reasons that we really got along with them. But uh, I think that one of them has to do with the fact that their family, uh, and they've never come right out and said it, but they are non-religious and they're also non-spiritual. Uh, so I recently had the chance to give the mom my book for Christmas, uh, which is uh -huh. about my spiritual spiritual experiences and um, kind of add to that the fact that I was meditating one day 
And I was kind of mad at myself. This was a little earlier on, but I was mad at myself that I had rehomed the dog. And I'm like, why did I do that? I wanted a dog so bad and Finn was wonderful. Why did I do that? Right. And so I was meditating and I, I, I heard that uh, the family was in need of this dog to keep wow. them together and that um, they were in need of a teacher. Oh, beautiful. So, yeah, so that was the message I got. And then wow. sh uh, shortly after that, against all odds, because I thought there would be no way in the world that my husband would go for me, uh, go for me getting another dog after we had just rehomed Finn. And when I told him that I was looking at another dog, he wasn't angry in the least. He wasn't like, why? This is crazy. As a matter of fact, my family said, oh, we knew you were going to be doing this. Really? And I was hmm. like, how did everybody know that? <laughs> so um, coming to the end of the story here, uh, I looked again for a sheep -a doodle because I loved Finn and he was a great dog. So I thought, you know, I want to go for a sheep -a doodle again. So I got online and I started looking and I found a little gal called Sky. So I called the woman up and I said, I'm interested in the dog. And she said, uh, well, you know, Skye's really nice, but she has an intestinal problem. And, uh, you know, she's at the vet a lot and so forth. But I do have another little gal called Sage. <laughs> so Sage being, of course, as you know, a spiritual teacher. Just be, yeah. Yeah, so um, we ended up with Sage, and my husband's going to show you her right now. Oh, let's see Sage. Oh. She's a great gal. Look at that. She's got a little outfit on. Look at that. Oh, How yeah, cute. <laughs> Look at her harness. <laughs> oh, boy. I bet you she's good to cuddle with. She loves to cuddle. She does. <laughs> oh, so she's adorable. How long have you had her now? Um, we've had her for... Yeah, since about right before New Year's. So that well, she is easy. adorable. She yeah, feels like that... So. Looks like that she's been there uh, a lot longer than that. She looks like she's really moved into the family. She's very comfortable here. Yeah, she's <laughs> wonderful, and uh, she's made herself right at home. And I think she is, in some way, somehow, uh, going to be a teacher for me. Yes, I, I understand that. And a lot of people that may be listening might not understand how could a dog be a teacher, but uh, dogs teach us patience, kindness, love unconditional love. I mean, they can be amazing teachers. Uh, I find that my pets have always centered me and given me balance and grounded me. And they're, um, they're just, they don't want anything, mainly just love. And right. if we could learn that as humans, I think that would be a good lesson. Absolutely. Yeah. They embody patience and love. That's for sure. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your puppy stories. And, um, and uh, you've been a joy. And for those of you that haven't seen the Nancy interview, take a look at the Nancy interview on her spiritual transformative uh, encounter that she had. So that is a separate, that is a separate episode. Check that out. All right. Take care. Happy Thank Valentine's you. Day, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. Bye-bye.